بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه ربنا تقبل صيامنا وقيامنا ودعاءنا ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا ربنا وارحمنا برحمتك واجعلنا من عتقائك من النيران في هذا الشهر الكريم لما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى in the ayah that we have been reciting in Surah At-Tawbah saying إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bought from the believer their anfusahum, their souls, their lives, and their wealth in exchange that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them paradise. Now, ishtara is like subhana, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is like is a bargain, is a transaction. And then as a believer, as a believer, how should we understand this transaction between as a believer or between you as a believer and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, if you think about it, it's like someone has his own choice, he has his free will, he has the freedom to do whatever he wants. And he has the freedom to not do this bargain with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, this bargain is the honoring for the believer because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he didn't say, that Allah has purchased from the humankind. He said from the believer, from the mu'mineen. Therefore, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said such a thing, so this is the great honor that every believer will be longing to have this transaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you, um, in this bargain, you just give me your soul and your wealth and in exchange will give you the, the paradise. So it is a bargain, when you look at it, it's the greatest generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow upon his servant and her servant the, this, this opportunity to honor ourselves, to dignify ourselves. Because always I remind myself the saying of Abi Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu in the meaning, in the meaning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first created you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you. Then imagine, let's put a transaction, like someone, for example, give you a few hundred dollars. Give you a few hundred dollars. A generous person. And then later on, he came back to you and he said, you remember I gave you those money? He said, you said yes, and I thank you for it. I'm very grateful to you. He said, will you give them back to me? And in exchange, I'm going to give you a trillion dollars. So the greedy person, he's not going to believe this person, say, no, I, I'm not sure. The person who really grateful, and he knows that this person, he gave it to him with no, with no interest. He didn't want anything from you. He gave it to you as a gift, as someone who has, you know, bona fide, he has a true, a good heart. So the person who is generous in nature, and grateful, he said, here, I'll give you. And that person is going to fulfill his promise. You take the few hundred dollars, replace it by the soul and the wealth, and you take the trillion dollars and you replace it by the paradise. Because the paradise, as the Prophet ﷺ, the commodity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very valuable. Nobody can buy paradise. Nobody can you know, get to paradise with his own deeds. Even the Prophet Sallallahu as he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, told us, nobody can be embraced in the mercy of Allah with his own action or getting into paradise with his own action, except if Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala embrace you. Therefore, as a believer, if you truly want to honor yourself, you have to understand this type of transaction. So how come someone is going to give his life to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala and his will? So the meaning is, is like the drive that is going to be driving you in this life. The longing that you have, the willpower that is taking you and trying to fulfill your dreams in the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the meaning of it. 
So this is a covenant between Allah, you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the main trend of your life, the core of your life is racing to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any price. And anything, anything that comes to you from the gain of this worldly life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than that. So if someone said, I'll give you all this life and you change your deen, he said, Wallah, you kill me, I will not change the deen. That's how you gave your life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala look in the salat, you say, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. So if how you express it, Allah is the greatest, Allah is greater than all your life. Allah is greater than everything you have. Allah is greater than your wealth. Allah is greater than your family. Allah is greater than everything. As a matter of fact, he's the one who gave you everything you have. So when you do this bargain, you do it as a bargain of honoring. You are going to honor yourself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the next ayah, قَالَ يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ they fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is every one of us is going to do that, to fulfill this covenant? What the meaning? What the meaning of it? It's like someone said, I cannot fulfill my covenant till I was going to participate or find a, a just cause, you know, where they're going to have a battle. I'm going to get uh, into it. You know, people, you know, maybe uh, most of the people that didn't even carry a weapon. So how are you going to do that? How are you going to fulfill yuqatiluna fi sabilillahi fayaqtuluna wa yuqtaluna? Now, the most amazing thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, he say they slay and they've been slain. So here that you understand that the objective is not to win, to overcome, to slay. No, the objective here, the heart that you have that is driven toward the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the most important. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Nisa, قال, فَلْيُقَاتِلْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهِ بِالْأَخِرَةِ Whoever, who, who buy, buy the akhirah with his soul. يَشْرِي الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا بِالْأَخِرَةِ قَالَ وَمَنْ يُقَاتِلْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَيُغْلَمْ أو يقتل. I mean, the first is going to be overcome, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that the objective of getting into such a thing, in a cause to stand for the truth, is not to win. But your principle to stand for the truth. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaching us, have you the principle to stand for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with everything you have? Which is me like your deen, your faith, your iman need to be the most valuable thing in your life. That's the best thing you have. That's the best gift you have. If you betray your iman, you have betrayed yourself. And you betrayed the covenant with Allah. Ya amanu la takhunu Allah wa rasoola wa takhunu amanitikum. Do not betray Allah and His Messenger and you betray your own trust. And this trust is the covenant that you have made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, yaqtuluna wa yuqtalun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to understand that the striving has levels. The striving has levels. The highest level of the striving is someone to truly leave his family behind and he goes to fight in the sake of Allah like the believer they did in Badr, they did in, in Uhud, they did in, uh, you know, in Surah, for example, we're talking about Tabuk, the way how they mean, you know, to march forth for the sake of Allah, to leave everything behind. That is, that is, you know, what the believer has to have in his heart. However, the striving of, uh, to, in the sake of Allah does not mean that you're going to fight because that's not the, 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 the point here. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring to the highest level of the striving because the highest level of the striving and the Prophet sallallahu he said, for the people who's fighting, qala kafahu mihnatan, when the Prophet sallallahu said that the people who die as a shaheed, they will not be, you know, uh, faced uh, or enduring the fitna of munkir wa nakir. They're not going to be asked by munkir wa nakir. So they asked the Prophet sallallahu I mean, how come, and this is a great honor, قَالَ كَفَاهُ مِحْنَةً أَنْ يَكُونَ تَحْتَ ظِلَالِ السُّيُوفِ It's a big fitna, a big trial, a big, subhanAllah, to be under the shades of the swords. Some of the companions, they were wishing for a battle to come because they were, they were not with the Prophet ﷺ in Badr. 
They were not in Badr. But when it came to the Hud, when they saw what's, how things are, it's not easy. So it required big heart. It required big love. It required dedication, devotion, sacrifice. And this sacrifice only can be, can be fulfilled only if you have the love of Allah greater than everything else and if you have your faith dearer to you than anything else. This bargain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also specified in detail in the beginning of Surah At-Tawbah. Qala, subhanahu wa ta'ala, say if your father, your, your parents, your, your siblings, your children, your spouses, the money that you accumulate, the business that you have, the beautiful home that you have dearer to you than Allah and his messenger and striving in his cause, then wait till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring his matter and Allah will not guide the wicked one. This is. So here, ishtara, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to fulfill this bargain, you have to check in your heart. And then the heart near to be the dearest into your heart is Allah and his messenger and the dearest into your heart is your religion of Islam. That's the meaning. Because Al-Qitalu is the highest level of the striving, which is me, which is me. If it comes to a point where you're going to be pushed to do such a thing, you're going to do it. People, they fight for their own money, right? People, they fight to defend their family. And whoever who does such a thing and he dies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept them as the shaheed. So a believer will not fight to give everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the question is not, or the point is not about fighting, but about your heart, the drive that you have, the love. Look, you find people, you know, they die for their lovers. You don't die for Allah. Eh? Qala, this bargain that we have made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the greatest benefit of this bargain that you start to rejoice the result of this bargain while you are alive. So when you do this bargain with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confer to you a tranquility and inner peace everlasting. It's going to be at the time in your life when you're dying, into your grave, when you be resurrected, when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the greatest of, of, the, of, the, of success. Who are these people? How can we be like them? Because as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, when you have this type of heart and you die on your bed, Allah will put you in the list of the shaheed. The Prophet Sallallahu said, the most of the martyrs of my ummah will die on their bed. So it's not a question of fighting, no. You only do that for justice, for a cause that really contributes in the well-being of the whole universe and the human being. But if you have that drive and you die on your bed, you're going to be also listed as a shaheed. Who are these people? How can we be like this? So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala gives us the characteristic. at العابدون الحامدون السائحون الراكعون الساجدون الأميرون بالمعروف والنهيون على المنكر والذين الله سبحانه والمحافظون لحدود الله. So these nine repenting and running back to Allah سبحانه وتعالى worshiping Allah by invoking His greatness. And his lordship and his subhanahu wa ta'ala as being al ilahu al awwal wal akhir wal the deity. Qala al hamidun to be always grateful to Allah, thanking Allah, saying alhamdulillah. As sa'ihun, as sa'ihun, one of his meaning is to travel in the earth and the traveling in the earth for the case of the companion of the one Allah ta'ala alayhi, it was to go and establish justice and convey the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be might be travel for any ibadah, going to hajj, going to think, going to for the sake of, of you know, uh, helping in a cause of justice as sa'ihun and then al raqi'un as sajidun you find you see the believer into ruku and sujood always begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoying good and forbid evil 
and then you are preserving the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of these require only one drive, is your love of Allah and the love of the Prophet which is going to give you, like someone, take the example of someone really, he has, you know, a billion dollar, and he's not satisfied because he wants to get, to get the second one. And then as soon as he gets the second one, he will be longing for the third one. And this is the nature of the human being as the Prophet Sallallahu If the child of Adam will be given two valleys of gold, he will be longing for the, for the third one and only fill the eye of Ibn Adam or the stomach of Ibn Adam, the child of Adam, except the, the dust. So these people look at them. They work so hard, right? They work so hard. They read about it. They know all the types of the investment. They know all the types of the return of the investment. They know all the categories when they're going to make the money. They actually, they have, subhanAllah, they develop kind of a flair to know where to invest and not to, to when, when and not. And all of that, subhanAllah. Why? Because they drive is the love of the money. Can we not as believer make your drive the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You're going to find yourself always ta'ab, always making hamd, always in sujood, always in the thing. Even when you are at work, as soon, you know, when you have a time, you're going to make tasbih. You're going to look, Ya Allah help me, Ya Allah ishrah sadr, Ya Allah this. So you're going to be with Allah. That, that subhanAllah drive, that drive that we need, especially in Ramadan to develop it as we have the time, inshaAllah, to develop it. One of these great people, and all of you know, is Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. He had this great drive. He has, he the best of the companion after Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. He had his own profound understanding. He was a ruler, and he was al Farooq, and his position didn't, subhanAllah, prevent him, because don't tell me Umar, he's so busy, or like a leader, he's so busy, he will not be able to come to the Salah. A leader, he's so busy, he will not able be to make tasbih. A leader is so busy, he will not be able to make siyaha. No, Umar radiallahu ta'ala did everything. To the point that the, the Sahaba, they be, you know, they trying to try to change his attire, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because he was, has an attire with, you know, a lot of patches on his, on his clothes. Maybe because people, they're going to come and, you know, leaders from other, you know, society and towns and countries, they're going to meet the leader of the Muslim. At least he will have a good attire. So they could not talk to him. They sent Aisha and Hafsa, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, to try to talk to Umar, you know, if you can change the clothes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all this tayyibat. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala, and he listened to them, listen, listen, he said, are you sure of what you're saying? He said, he said don't you remember the Prophet sallallahu how he used to be? Don't you remember in Ghazwat al-Ahzab what he has? You, both of you, you know how he didn't have even anything to eat. So subhanallah, he kept talking to them till they make them, he make them cry. They left. The company, they said, ah, what happened with Umar? He said, leave him alone. Leave Umar alone. He said, my dearest Muhammad sallallahu and Abi Bakr, they already gone. And I don't want to change. I want to keep everything as is. You know, if you come criticize me in my leadership or in the way how, you know, I'm running, you know, the, the, the Muslim believers, yes. But when it comes to me, leave me alone. And this is how we need to be. You have your integrity and you have who you are. Make who you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be excellent in business, be excellent in study, be excellent in every field possible. But be who you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have the bargain with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now Umar radiallahu ta'ala and he was leading the prayer when he was stabbed by Al-Majusi, Abu Lu'lu Al-Majusi. And he stabbed him with the blade that it has a poison. So that's it. You know, they gave him, uh, you know, they took him out of the prayer. The first thing when Umar he just, he came out, he was unconscious. He said, did the believer finish the prayer? They said, yes, Ya Umar. Everyone is talking about you. He's thinking about you. He said, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Then, subhanAllah, his son, Abdullah ibn Umar, he came and he put his, the head of his father on his thigh. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala, in this last moment, you know, what he's thinking? This is, subhanAllah, the example of a ta'ibun al-abidun al-hamidun al-sa'ihun. This is the example. He was thinking of the neighbor to be like the companionship that will be even in the grave. He said, please go to Aisha and ask her that Umar, you know, he'll ask you the permission 
to be buried next to his companion, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abu They said, we're going to tell her Amir al mumineen He said, no, don't say Amir al mumineen I'm not Amir anymore. I'm dying. That's it. No titles. No title. When you come to the grave, no titles. Huh? Put your PhDs, your diplomas, your things. Everything is out. No titles. Said, قَالَ لَسْتُ بِأَمِيرٍ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ اليوم. That's it. I'm dying. So they went to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala and she said, of course, she accepted. And he gave, when he gave the glad tidings, that when Umar radiallahu ta'ala feel comforted, but there's something else. And he was, as I have said, his head on the, on the thigh of his son. And he told him, Thakiletka ummuk, may your mother mourn you. Put my head on the ground. Look the humility. Put my head on the ground. And he was heard what he was saying. Huh? Woe to you, Ya Umar, if Allah will not forgive you. These are the noble ones. This is the example of those who truly love Allah. This is the example who really fulfilled their covenant with Allah. Minhum man qadha nahbahu wa minhum man yantadir. Some of them, they have fulfilled their covenant with Allah and some are waiting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who wait. Wait to fulfill the great covenant of Allah who dignify you and honor you and give you the everlasting tranquility in your heart from here to eternity. Allahumma ja'alna minhum ya arhamar rahimina wa ila salati arhamukumullah.